Hello everyone, welcome to GT Studios, and today we're having a look at a fairly old graphics card, in this case from Asus, called the HD6770. It's a pretty good value for money card and was when it was released, and it has DirectX 11 compatibility, which means the latest games will still run on it, and it's a pretty cool card. It's a single slot uh, cover, but it'll take up two slots in your actual case because it's got the heatsink, which is fairly large. It's got a single fan, it's got a single 6-pin connector for power, and this one was quite dusty when I got it, so I decided to give it a bit of a clean. Just to go through that process quickly, uh, you have to just flip it over and remove all of the four screws that are on the back, and if there are more on your particular model, just make sure to figure out which ones are which. These four will be different from the rest of them on the bigger models. And then after removing the four screws, you just want to remove it, take off the little fan connector, take off all the thermal paste and replace it. In my case, it got very hard, so I'm going to take it apart again and just uh, try and take it off with some rubbing alcohol or something. I didn't have any of that, so I just had to do the best I could. After that, just line up the four nuts on the bottom to the uh, screw holes, and then just carefully flip it over and make sure not to move it, and you'll be set. Uh, to screw in all the screws back, just don't screw them in too hard, they've got little springs underneath them in most cases, so don't over tighten them too much, and uh, then you can put it into your case. The next step is fairly simple, just uh, open up your case side panel, remove the PCI cover if it's still there, in my case they won't because I took out my graphics card. Uh, those are the little things at the back of the case, uh, they might be held in by a screw. In some cases, you just have to pop it out or unscrew it and lift it out. Then you've got the PCI Time 16 connector, and uh, make sure that you to use the topmost one in your motherboard if it works at least. And then just line it up with the back's uh, PCI cover and carefully push it into the slot. Make sure to push down the uh, retention clip at the back first, though. That's at the end of the slot. Um, there's a little clip on the actual graphics card which will push that up to hold it in place. Then just tighten the screw in the back uh, by the cover that you removed earlier. After that you can just take your uh, PCI 6-pin uh, connector from your power supply. Uh, in some cases it might be a modular power supply, I doubt it in most of your cases if you're getting a graphics card like this. And then just plug it into the port on the actual graphics card. It should be at the top um, side for, away from the motherboard. So, once you've done that, power up your system and fire up a benchmark of some sort just to make sure that the card is working. In my case I used a 3D Mark and sometimes I would use 3D Mark Fire Strike but in this card's case it's a bit older, I wouldn't quite want to push it through this much of a test, so instead I decided to use something else. But before you can do all that you have to get your graphics drivers. So head to the AMD website, go to the drivers and find the uh, graphics, then go to the AMD, uh, AMD Radeon HD, then the HD6000, HD6770. Once you've done that, just go and download the latest driver and install it. Once you have, it'll ask you to restart your system, and then this should uh, pop up on your desktop if you right-click and go to the top option. So for the first benchmark I decided to run was 3D Mark Skydiver, which is included in the demo version of the software, so if you want to get that just for free, and test out your system, that's probably the best option. Uh, going through it, it uh, just basically pushes the card a bit, sees how much of a score you can get, and then you can compare it against other people who've had similar systems, just to make sure your system's running as it should be. Uh, in our case, we got a score of uh, just over 5,000, which is pretty respectable for an old card like this, especially with only one gigabyte of VRAM. When I say that, I am referring to the graphic score specifically, and ignoring the uh, overall score and the physics score because those are calculated with the CPU in mind as well. If we're just looking at graphics, just have a look at the left side. And that's a pretty respectable score considering the uh, age of the graphics card and the fact that it only has 1 gig of VRAM. So having a look at an actual game now, uh, Just Cause 3 on the lowest settings and at 720p, not 1080. It was quite stuttery here and there, but just flying around and uh, getting into a little bit of combat seemed okay. As soon as I got into intensive areas, uh, such as the military base, 
it did struggle quite a bit, especially when I'm turning around quickly. So if you're in a combat situation where you're quickly spinning around to shoot at multiple targets, it's going to struggle a bit. I did pull up this um, section over here, which will show me the uh, load of the graphics card, the temperature, and the clock speeds. And uh, at the moment we're in a loading screen, but as soon as it finishes there, you see the CPU, I mean the GPU load go up, and the temperature go up. But I'm quite surprised that this graphics card didn't get any hotter and stayed under 50 degrees in that test. Next up we have CSGO, and this is a fairly easy game to run, especially on all the hardware, it's quite forgiving, and even at 1080p on the high settings, it managed to maintain a 62 FPS average with a 189 FPS maximum and only a 32 minimum, so very respectable averages, it was very playable, and I'm pretty happy with the card performance in this game. Next up we have Fallout 4. This game in particular is very stressful on the 1GB VRAM, and I was pretty worried going into it, but on the medium settings at 720p I was pleasantly surprised with an average between walking around in the wasteland and going into Diamond City, with an average of 33 FPS, a maximum of 62, and a minimum of 15. There was not that much stutter, and it was quite playable even in combat situations, so I'm very happy with Fallout 4. Next up we have a very difficult to run game, PUBG. It was definitely the worst experience I had on the card today, and we had to turn down the settings all the way down to the lowest uh, possible settings, which was very low at 720p, but I left the resolution scale at 100%. I started benchmarking once I got onto the ground, and although the average was decent at 40 FPS, it wasn't particularly playable because every now and then there was quite a lot of stutter, and that is shown by the uh, minimum of 0 FPS. We had a maximum of 50, so there wasn't much uh, variation around 40 until it dropped properly to about 0. So PUBG definitely not very playable even though it had a decently high um, maximum. If it got into combat, it really did struggle quite a lot. So our last game for today is City Skylines, which is a quite a fun game and doesn't really need that much uh, FPS to be playable, because uh, it's just a city building game and it's quite fun to play. Uh, it was around 30 FPS with the medium settings. Uh, I didn't have time to benchmark this one, but I did actually go and play it for a bit. Uh, in my little town. It is not the most intensive area that you could have in the game, especially if you had like a massive city, but even with my mod that allowed me to walk around the ground, the buildings looked okay and not, it didn't look too much different from when I was playing on my 970. Very playable experience and I'm quite happy with the card's performance. Overall, the card didn't get above 60 degrees on any of these tests and even after City Skylines, which was the final game I ran, it was still under 60. So, a pretty decent uh, temperature, especially considering it's an older card, and a lot of the older AMD cards did quit quite hot. So I was quite surprised with the card, and I do think that if you're needing a card for a budget gaming PC, this would probably be a really good deal, especially if you can pick it up for under £20 or about under $30. So. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please like and subscribe, I've got lots of tech content and gaming content if you'd like to uh, follow the channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you everyone for watching, and goodbye.